This video is going to take a look at some of the ways that we can customize the test output that we receive within IntelliJ. Some of these items include seeing the statistics for how long our tests take to run, how we can filter the results that we see, how we can navigate across the console, how we can sort and also export the results from our test class once we finish running the tests. So to begin, I've got a test class from one of my previous videos. This includes eight separate tests or a fairly simple test class. And I've run this test class all together and we can see that all of the tests are passing on this left hand side. And each test will print out just a test number for us to track within the console. So if we extend the navigation box on the left a little bit further to the right, we'll be able to see this kind of cog uh, where we can customize some of the settings within IntelliJ to allow us to have some further features and output from our test results. And what we will later see is that there's also a few shortcuts that we can have when we run our test to quickly diagnose the problems that we're seeing and how we can also navigate across the code through our test cases down below. So the first point of feedback that we can quickly see is if we navigate to this cog item and select show inline statistics. So if we select this, we can now see the milliseconds that it takes for each of our test cases within the test class to finish executing. So we can see the longest taken one was get CSV stats record, and that took 193 milliseconds. And the other tests are fairly negligible below five milliseconds. I'm now going to change one of these tests so that it deliberately fails and then we can begin seeing how we can also customize our test output to help us navigate around that test that has failed. We can now see player name equal is now failing. So we can see each kind of test case has its own sort of log or kind of system output and that might be the same for your tests where you have loads of different logs uh, for when your test case is executing. And what would be nice is if when we're running this entire class, that when an individual test case is running, that we're able to see that log within our screen. So if that test were to fail, we would then see it fail uh, right in front of our eyes. So if I slow down this failing test by putting the thread to sleep for say a couple seconds, and if I change the settings to track running test, we will now be able to see the actual output from each test as it's being executed. And when it comes to test one, we will expect a small delay just before that printout is made, and then a small delay just after that printout is made, just to emphasize how this track running test setting is working. Okay, so we were able to see the console output for the player name equal method. And quite interestingly, on the left hand side, we can now see that it's taken four seconds and 181 milliseconds to execute. And that's because of this thread.sleep uh, line that I've added to the test. So if we take a look at the console output, we have kind of the output from the test at the top. We then have the failure that has caused that test to fail. And then we also have the stack trace for the failure of this test here down below. Now, if we were to change this system outprint, or if we were to have a very long log, we can now rerun all of our tests, and we can see what is printed to the console. So what we can immediately see in the console is all of the logging that has come from our tests. So this is test date followed by test one, and if we scroll down, we can finally see why that test one has failed. So we have the expected and actual values, and then we also have the stack trace. And then after that, we have all the other console output. So if we had multiple tests that all had their own kind of logging and quite a bit of logging, it would take us quite a while to scroll down and to find the actual stack trace for the failed test. Or even if we were to select the test that failed itself, we would then have to scroll down further to find the expected and actual values and also the stack trace for that failed test. So what we can do is head over into the settings and we can select scroll to stack trace option. And what this will do is when we run our test class, it will automatically scroll to that failed exception for the first test 
so that straight away we can see the stack trace of where our test is failing. We can immediately see that we're taken straight to the stack trace that has caused our first failing test, so that we play a name equal. So rather than selecting the test class after our test cases have been run, we can actually navigate directly to that first failed test automatically if we go to our settings and select select first failed test when finished. So now if I rerun this test class, rather than finishing right at the top, scroll down to the first stack trace, I can instead automatically select it on the player name equal method because that's the one that's failed. So you can see that this failed test has already been selected and we're already scrolled down to the expected and actual value comparison and also the stack trace. So the next setting we're going to modify will concern this left hand column that we see for after our test class has been executed. So we can see each of the tests which have been run and whether they've been successful or not. And if we're only concerned about the tests which have failed, we can select this tick icon at the top left, which will now filter out all of the tests that have passed. So I'm just going to clean up this failing test and I'm going to cause one of the other tests to fail. And now if I rerun the test class, we can expect those two failing tests to only appear on that left-hand column. So we can now see that only two tests are appearing on that left-hand column. The same also applies for ignored tests. So if I mark a test with the annotation of ignore and we show the ignored test on the left hand side by selecting this round circle with a line through it, it will show us all the tests that are ignored and also only the tests which have failed. So we can see the two tests that have failed and also the one test that has been ignored. Now if I were to select one of these tests which have failed, the console would display the log of that test and also the expected and actual values. But what would be nice is up at the top, if when we selected these different tests, it would navigate directly to that test so we can see the actual logic that was being processed straight away. And that's possible by selecting navigate with single click. So now that that's been selected, when we select these different failing tests, the actual test class will navigate directly to those tests as we select them. So this is quite a nice shortcut which you can use your mouse for when navigating across different tests. So it's quite useful with a single click to navigate to the failing test method. However, it would also be convenient if we were navigating directly to the assertion that was causing that test method to fail. And we can navigate to that source code logic by enabling the open source at exception setting. So now, now if I select a failing test, just once it will take us to that test class itself. But if I were to double click that failing test, it would then take us to the actual assertion that has failed within that test class. So again, if I double click, it will take us directly to the assertion. If I single click, it just takes us to the test method itself. The final setting within IntelliJ that I'm going to look at involves inspecting the history of our test runs. So we can see that I've been running multiple tests today and we can navigate back to these different tests to see which ones have failed and how those failure messages are appearing towards us. So if we're making changes to the actual source code and we want to see how the expected failure or the expected item is changing from test case to test case each time that we run it, we can navigate across them by using the test history tab. The final piece that I'd like to cover is how we can export our tests by using this outward pointing arrow from the right hand side. So if we select export test, we can have different export formats such as HTML or XML. And I'm just going to create a HTML export right now. And then if I were to select this, we can then open it within our browser and we have a nice GUI to understand how our tests have failed and how they have passed. 
So you can see the number of tests which have been run, the number that have failed, and the number which have passed. And it also provides us with the log output for why these tests have failed, along with some further statistics on how long they've taken to run. So that summarizes this video on how we can set up IntelliJ to create customized reports from our tests and how we can also make navigating across our test classes much easier and efficient.